Hi, in this episode of Data Analysis Policy Show, I'm going to show you three things why you need to have a macroeconomic model. Three reasons why you need to have a macroeconomic model. And uh, especially in these times of Corona, you need to have a macroeconomic model. So stay with me. Hi, my name is Rudy Calmera, and as you know, the, the, this show is about macroeconomic model. And this show is about uh, um, turning data into analysis so that you can create the right policies. So if you are a policy advisor in the Caribbean, and if you are looking at the world, what is happening with the corona, etc. And also, after the corona crisis, uh, the, grow, the world is projected to go into a recession, a deep recession, deeper than 2008 with a financial, um, uh, financial sector crisis. So I'm going to show you why the three reasons why you need to have a macroeconomic model as a policy advisor, as a practitioner, economic practitioner in the Caribbean. And this applies also for the whole world. So it's not only uh, the Caribbean, but it's also the whole world, wherever you are living, wherever you are seeing this episode, you can benefit from it because you want to structure your insights. You want to be on top of your game. Now, what happens? I'm from Curacao and during this week, I've been receiving all kinds of policy papers of, of, of data, of analysis from, for instance, the Ministry of Economic Affairs, from the Central Bank of Curaçao, from the, the Ministry of Finance, from the CFT, all kinds of, of data have been um, put on there in the world, in the newspapers, talking about the effects, the effects of the corona crisis. Now, let me tell you, in all of those papers, what I saw is that there are a lot of data all over the place. Some people are saying this is the effect, some is this is the effect. Some people are saying how many people are working in tourism. Some people are saying how many, how big is our GDP. All kinds of effects. So that is the first thing that once something like this happens, what happens is that people don't have the exact data. They don't have the exact uh, information. They have to look for the information. I mean, right now in the Caribbean, I've seen some, some, uh, some videos, some uh, live videos about the Caribbean. Many, many countries are trying, are struggling with the effects of the corona crisis. And it's not only the effects of the corona crisis, because the world is going through a recession. It's almost into a recession. And when the world contracts, if the recession keeps on, on, on being there more and more years, if it's a deeper recession, many people will lose their jobs, many uh, companies will go bankrupt, the governments will receive less uh, tax income, they have to cut their budgets, social, um, social benefits are going to be cut. This can have effect on the pension funds. This can have effect on the currencies because if um, if the tourism is is not generating foreign income, then you cannot keep those um, those currencies pegged to the dollar. So those are this is just the initial part, and there can there can be many 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 effects in the coming years this year and also the coming years so as a practitioner as a as a as an econ economist somebody looking at the data looking at the at the figures what is the first benefit first benefit of you having an economic model now let me show you my what i'm talking about what you see here is the data the data one of the databases of the macroeconomic model. So your first benefit of having a macroeconomic model is that you you have all the data, all the data here, you have it in one place. So while everybody is looking around, searching for data before they can start their analysis, while everybody is, is 
screaming for data, putting data together, asking a lot of uh, uh, institutions, uh, Central Bank, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Economic Development, uh, the, the Tourism Bureau, while everybody is asking everybody what are the numbers, you as the practitioner, you as the economist with economic macro model, with an economic macro model, macroeconomic model, have all the data, all the data. So if you, if you, the first thing I want to tell you is if you, um, if you subscribe for this. Uh, to become part of my community after the, sh the, the show I will be showing you how to do it you will get this data the 54 variables that you need to have so that when everybody is running for the data you as a practitioner you as an economic economist you as a policymaker you know exactly what kind of data from now on to collect and I'm going to show you why you need to collect that so look let's just briefly look this is the data you will get. You will get this data, the format of this data, an example, and these are the data. Only these 54 variables, those are the ones. So if you have any questions, just ask me. But these are the 54 variables of every economy of all the Eastern Caribbean, one Eastern Caribbean um, uh, country, wherever you are living, if you're living in also in China, in Asia, these are the numbers that you need to look at. Look at the, that one, number uh, 25. Number 25, you see that one, is import and exports. This one, imports and exports, imports of goods and services, and we also have exports of goods and services. So all the countries have an import and exports of goods and services. Okay, let's go down. You have the monetary, situation how much is the monetary um, uh, the monetary stock you have the consumer price I'm just picking up some of the indicators that you need to have you need to have population you need to, you need to have the, 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 the population you need to have the labor force those are the numbers 54 variables 54 variables so going back while everybody is running like crazy looking for the data you already have that data how cool is that so stay with me and you will get how you will get you will get, uh, see how you can get that data that's the number one reason the second reason the second reason why you need a macroeconomic model now people think a, a, an economic model is something like a, a, a simple formula a simple formula um, like X times A plus B is Y. You know, it's a simple model. So a lot of people talk about models like it is a simple formula and you know, I'm working on my models, etc. I'm estimating that models. Now, the models I'm talking about here is a consistent framework of data, of definitions and data and behavioral equations. What do I mean with that? I mean that it's a consistent, very efficient system where you have like all the definitions that are relevant in an economy. So for instance, the, if you're looking at the budget deficit, the budget deficit is the revenues minus the expenditures. That's a definition. And in every model I have constructed, I've constructed 10 macroeconomic models for two Dutch Caribbean islands and eight Eastern Caribbean islands. So in all those models, their definition is really the same. The other thing, GDP, the debt ratio, the debt ratio, the debt ratio, sorry, is debt divided by GDP. So if you're looking at the debt ratio is 54%, then every island, every country, it's the same definition. So that's what I mean with a consistent framework where you take, for instance, in this case, the debt divided by the GDP, which is the total income. That is a consistent framework. So when you have that consistent framework, you know exactly how to get the data which we got 
which we already put in step one. Now you're going to put that data into um, a consistent framework. They are related together. But that's not the consistent framework of definitions only. Also, estimates of the future. In this model, the estimates of the future are green. That means the estimate of the future is, for instance, an investment function. An investment function says investment is dependent on how your economy has uh, fared in the past, how the GDP has in, in the last three years. You see, that's an investment function. A consumption function is saying consumption is a percentage of the income, not only the income, the income after taxes. Okay? So that is an export function. An export function is, for instance, in this model, dependent on the number of crews and stayover tourists. So that's the, two, the second part why you need a model, because you will get the consistent definition of uh, uh, how the, the, the data are related together. For instance, uh, the, the, the debt quote and also the part where you see how the, the estimates are done. So the estimates are, in my model, green. So let's look at what I'm, what I'm telling you. So the second part, next to the data, now we go and we say the model. So here you see the model. The model, and you see exactly a, defin, a, a, a system. So let's look at the definition first. The definition. I'm going to show you the definition. So let me look look at you. I'm going to show you the definition of the debt. Um, and that definition is here. You see one? Row 247. 247 is the debt divided by GDP. You see here, that is projected to become, in this scenario, is going from 51% to 59%. And how is this definition created? You see exactly here, we can trace the, the, the dependence and we can see that this definition, this equation is dependent on two items, two variables. And the first variable is the depth. You see here, this is the depth and the depth is about, this is the depth, 2.2. 8 billion and the GDP which is 5.2 billion 5.2 billion in this episode you see this is this is um, this is how you see the definition and let's look at the consumption let's now look at the the estimates of the future so I said the gross capital formation by enterprises. This is like the, inv the investment function. You see that this investment function, if we check of where it is going, I said the last three years. So this investment function, I clicked in there and I see where is it coming from. And you see it is coming from the variables of gross domestic product for the enterprises of the last three years and it is also probably from the investment price so here we see a variable in the future which is green which we estimated and we also saw a depth uh, a definition okay so that's the second Second reason why you need to have a macroeconomic model. So recapping, not only the data, we have seen that the macro model gives you a database. And the second thing is it gives you a consistent framework for the, uh, the definitions, not only in small islands, but all over the world and also the estimates. So what have we seen? If you have this macroeconomic model anywhere in the world, it will work. Of course, 
the, 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 the behaviors will be a little bit different with different parameters, but this macroeconomic model, it will help you because you can run your simulations. Once I've created this microeconomic model for Curacao, for St. Martin, for St. Lucia, I can now create it for China. I can create it for the United States. I can create it for Europe. I can analyze the any, any e economy. So I will not be running around and saying like, hey, okay, what is happening? Now, but let me show you the third reason why you need a macroeconomic model. And this is where it gets excited, guys. This is the reason. This is only what we can do as practitioners with a macroeconomic model. Now, look at this, the picture. In the Caribbean, people are asking themselves, I mean, what are the effects of this um, coronavirus? Furthermore, not only the coronavirus, but if the world goes into a contraction, if the the economies of the European countries where we are dependent from or the North American countries like Canada and United States, if the economies collapse or if Asian economies collapse, what is going to happen with the Caribbean? Long term, how do we need to change the Caribbean islands so that we can transform our economies? I mean, this morning I saw, for instance, Dr. Justin Ram from the Central Caribbean, from the Caribbean Development Bank, Caribbean Development Bank, he was in a in a in a, a virtual summit where he said that we really need to have um, um, think about the competitiveness of the Caribbean islands. So when I hear competitiveness, I already already know what indicator to look into my my economy into a microeconomic model. I need to look at the export price. How is the export price of my uh, island, Curacao, or any island in the Caribbean, how are they compared to the other islands? Because the competitiveness uh, is determined by the price uh, you have internally. It's dependent on, on, on uh, the import price, etc. We are not going to look at the competitiveness, but when you hear competitiveness, you will know, exa know exactly where to look into your model. But the third reason, are you ready for the third reason? I mean, this reason uh, um, made a revolution in my, in my life, transformed my life when I started to doing this. And that is the power of simulations. I mean, let me take, let me take a, a glass of water. When you have a macroeconomic model and everybody is trying to put all those spreadsheets together, they're trying to construct what is going to happen, you will sit back and you will run a simulation. And I'm going to show you what simulations I ran for the Curacao economy. And you can also, when you have these kind of models like this, you can be running this for your own island in the Caribbean. The scenario I was running is this. What happens if the cruise and the stayover tourists decrease with 50% on Curacao? Can you imagine that? Curacao has a lot of tour, uh, tourism. Stayover is the, 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 the tourists which stay for maybe 10, year, 10 days and the cruise stay, uh, tourists, they stay for only for one day. So what happens if that happens? What happens with the economy when that happens? That is what we can do as practitioners with a macroeconomic model. We are able to go in, type directly on those indicators, cruise and stay over, and then see the picture. Nobody can do that. Nobody, remind you, read my lips, nobody can do that. We can do that because we have invested into macro model. I'm going to show you exactly. So. With that, with, that, with that indicator, with that scenario, first thing you want to know is how many cruise tourists are there. And the second thing you want is how many stayover tourists are there. Now, I'm seeing I'm having only two minutes, but I'm going to go extra five minutes of your time with this because this is getting critical. So how many cruise tourists are there and how many stayover tourists are there? That's the question. And then we're going to reduce it with 50%. Now, let me look at the model. And I'm here. 
and when I am here what I will do is I will go completely down to the tourism sector the sector tourism so I can click there go to tourism and when I go to the tourism sector see when I go to the tourism sector I could exactly go to that indicator because I have my data we have let, let me say we we with the with a macroeconomic outlook we have our data stru structured so I go the number of stay over tourists in 2019 is 462,000 persons do you see that we got it we don't have to go to the uh, central bank we don't go to have to go to the tourism bureau we have our data now the other one how big is the stay over the, the cruise tourists this is row 186 you have there we have seven seven hundred seventy eight thousand cruise tourists you see you see what how 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 how, how easy it is you go there and you have your numbers now let's reduce this these numbers let's reduce these numbers with 50 percent i'm going to show you how i did it now i go to the sim sheet and the sim sheet is i click on the sim sheet and i show you exactly here how i created that and this formula is saying i'm picking up um uh, that number and I'm doing uh, I'm picking up the number in the model which we just saw of the stay over and I am putting 0 0.5 in there now the next one is the cruise I'm picking up this number of the cruise and I'm putting that in there of do you, do you see that 0 0.5 times that number we just saw and that's how I calculated it now once we calculated this data I can put that data into the into the the, the 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 system I can put that data into the system so let's look at how I put that data into the system we go to the model and what I did is in this formula once you see this formula of the cruise tourist I inserted here minus three eight eight nine minus three eight nine and I in this system so that it dropped and in this system I inserted here minus two three one which is the drop so you see here that the drop is about 50 percent the drop is about 50 percent and that 50% is calculated you see from these two these two uh, um, uh, variables and also this drop is about 46% and this is calculated from these two variables so that is how we calculated the impact of that model now do you want to see what the effects are I'm going to be very brief but I'm going to show you the dashboard nobody has these dashboards but we have these dashboards in our economic model where we see the picture what's going to happen so while everybody outside is just running and trying to construct dashboards what we as practitioners with an economic model what we can do and what I mean with we is wherever you are in the world but especially in the Eastern Caribbean and in the Caribbean all those islands in the Caribbean have something very special for you coming the Eastern Caribbean islands have something very special I'm working on these workshops online workshops I give you free information so let's go and see what the effects are for Curacao so I'm going now to show you my screen and I'm going to show you the dashboards now these dashboards are really really interesting because these dashboards you will see the brown line which is actually the brown line which is the uh, the line before 
the we, we put in a decrease of 50 percent and then the blue line is the actual line after so what do you see here for 2020 you see before our economy was expected to go to minus 2.2 and now if i take out the 50 percent of cruise and stay over tourism look at it minus 8.2 so that economy is going to minus 8.2 a, a, a contraction of six percent only with the effect six percent now i put that only in 2020 because i don't know what's going to happen in 2021 but imagine an economy going contracting with 8.2 percent jobs are going to be lost do you want to know how many jobs do you want to know one how many jobs are going to be lost by that by a contraction of 50 percent let me show you this so we look at the indicator which is the the jobs the number of unemployed look at this the number of unemployed the number of jobs first the number of jobs is the employment so first it was 56 56.2 and it, uh, it was already decreasing and now it's going to be 53.3 you see 53.e while the target is 80,000 so we are way below a lot of jobs are going to be um, be um, a lot of job let me say exactly it's about 3,000 jobs only for this 3,000 jobs now this one unemployment the number of unemployed the number of unemployed is going to be from 15,000 to more than 70,000 so about 3,000 and that's the first the first effect the unemployment rate let me show you the unemployment rate because the unemployment rate is also very important unemployment unemployment is going from already 21 percent going to 24 percent 24 percent now so this is a first first effect a first effect and the second effect but more can do we can simulate we can simulate um let me see this is it so now i'm, I'm showing you it's going from let me see 22 to 24 and here we saw we saw that the number of employment was from 53 to yeah it went down and this one it went up the brown is much lower than the than the right so it's 15 to 17. so this is the first effect now purchasing power people losing jobs that means that the purchasing power was already minus 2.0 six and it's going to be minus 5.4 now what is the purchasing power you have money in your pocket divided the number of money the, the amount of money divided by inflation and that's the purchase power if your purchasing power goes down then the labor unions will certainly not be happy you see so let's look at a very critical the budget deficit of course is going up and let's look at the debt is going up you see that one the blue line is higher than the the, the, the green uh, the, the brown line and you see the current account deficit is going to worsen because the current account deficit for curacao only is minus fifth 1.5 billion and it's going to be 1.7 billion so you're going to lose about 200 200 million of foreign reserves can you see that can you see the power of macroeconomic model can you see how easy once we have a scenario we can run that scenario can you see can you appreciate that now those are the three reasons and I will recap the three reasons right now now in closing the three reasons are one you need a database 
you, you have a database. You have a database when you have all those, uh, we, you have that macroeconomic model because the foundation of the macroeconomic model is the database. The 54 variables we have, and out of those 54 variables, through definitions and behavioral equations, we can run all indicators. If you didn't see that, look at the other episodes down here you will see that we have all those indicators created. The two, second reason is, recapping, is you have a consistent database, you have a consistent um, definition, system of definitions. The definitions are clear, nobody has to make mistakes, and you have also a clear system of behavioral equations for the future. And the third reason is you have a simulation framework. You can run simulations while everybody else is running around. So you can become the trusted advisor when you have a macroeconomic model. Now, I have something special for you. If you want to know what those 54 variables are, and you want to have a sheet, a spreadsheet with the 54 variables, that you need to focus on, you can get that right now. You can get that right now by clicking on www.calmera.net forward slash waitlist. And when you click there and you put your name and your email in there, you will reserve your seat on my waiting list. And you will also get that information which is the 54 variables. You can get a cheat sheet. The cheat sheet is that you are the only one who has that. Nobody else has that. So I'm giving that to you as part of my community. And the second thing is whenever, what are you waiting for? You're waiting on that wait list for all the good things to come because they're going to be a new experience for the Eastern Caribbean islands and the Dutch Caribbean. Curacao, St. Martin, maybe Aruba. If there are people from Aruba watching, maybe you, 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 I will include you. But you will have an opportunity to go into a, an experience where we will be working on our economies, on how to transform our economies, etc. Doors have not closed yet. Now, have not opened yet but once doors open it will be a very short period and only the people on that waiting list will be informed the first time will be informed first so that they can grab a place a seat on that plane and that plane is also going to go to china virtually that plane is going to china because we are also going to analyze the economy of china i'm not speaking exactly telling you exactly what's going to happen but i want to keep you at the tip of your seat in the front of your seat to know exactly what's going to happen so if you found this valuable i want you to click on www.calmera.net forward slash waitlist put your name in that and you in there and your email and you will get the waitlist i will be sending the waitlist um shortly and then I will be sending that wait that, that wait list on that, that cheat sheet shortly. And that cheat sheet is something I'm giving right now. But I can make up my mind and say, hey, I don't give this wait list anymore. So you have to be fast. Take action. Take action and grab that cheat sheet. It's a secret of your success. Now, there might be people not policy advisors, investors, etc. looking at this. If you are an investor, also, you want to know what is going to happen in the Caribbean, in the world, etc. So you need to have that database and you need to have that, those 54 variables. So that's it for me. That's it for me. Next time, on Monday, same day, same uh, hour, same place. Make sure that you are there. The next episode is going to be Monday and we are going to talk about mindset. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye.